Hi everyone and welcome to Safe Diving. So today's video is more of an open question so that we can all talk about this as a community. So I'll obviously put my views down here about sort of what I've seen online and from my personal experiences and then of course you can put your points across in the comments below. Now there used to be a polling function on YouTube up here um, but I'm not too sure if that still works to be honest but if it does um, then I'm going to put a poll up here. Um, but this all started with a story that came up on my feed earlier on in lockdown when everyone was talking or you know, sort of taking a more serious look at COVID-19 and the long-term effects of an infection like this around the world and one story caught my eye which I thought was worth a discussion but I've been surprisingly busy recently and never got around to actually doing a video on it and this is the simple act of sharing second stages during an out-of-air situation. As all trained scuba divers know, we're taught to dive with at least two second stages on all dives so that two divers can breathe from a single air supply in the unlikely event that something should go wrong with one diver's air supply. At the recreational level, most divers are taught to have a primary on a short hose that they breathe from during the dive and then an emergency second on a longer hose that their buddy can take if they need to. A while back, I switched to a different method called long hose primary donate where my primary is fitted to a two meter long hose that I donate to my buddy if they need it. And this has several benefits in that I'm donating a second stage that I know 100% is fully functional because I've been breathing from it and it's safe to breathe at that depth. I've just taken a good breath from it so I have plenty of time to now secure a second instead of my buddy getting a mouthful of water already on empty lungs and now needing another second stage and the list of benefits goes on but I donate my primary and that concept was fine until COVID spread around the globe and a really good way to spread it is to take something out of your mouth and put it into someone else's mouth. Now while yes a two meter long hose does meet current social distancing guidelines it's more the sharing spit that has training agencies thinking about how this affects practices. And while yes, you should never be diving whilst you're feeling the symptoms of COVID-19, let alone going out of the house, one of the biggest problems about it is that in so many cases, you don't feel or show any signs or symptoms, but you can still spread it. So scuba diving training is going to be very tricky going forwards because you practice all manners of sharing second stages during exercises. But I'm getting off topic, which is so easy to do on this subject, and I'm still working on a separate video that just looks at diving after COVID, but there's a lot of research involved into doing it properly. So back to primary donate and even secondary donate because I check all of my own gear pre-dive to make sure it's all working correctly. So there's a strong chance that that secondary has been in my mouth too. I now need to disinfect it between my pre-dive check and actually diving. So how are the training agencies changing guidelines and procedures or out of air or uh, out of gas emergencies? And I'm encouraging you to actually look up as many recommendations for all diving activities after this video. But here are GUE's current recommendations. So GUE's sound dive planning and good situational awareness reduces the risk of emergency emergency significantly. In the context of SARS-CoV-2 infection, the pulmonary COVID-19 diseases, the most significant procedural emergency action to be considered very carefully is the actual out-of-gas situation. Out-of-gas is a very rare occurrence when the dives have been planned and executed properly, but individuals should evaluate the risk and decide upon the options. So one, execute dives whilst breathing from a stage cylinder. The long hose primary regulator, disinfected properly, is clipped off ready to donate in case of out of gas emergencies. The dive is limited by the gas contained in the stage cylinder and the back gas is not to be used via the long hose primary regulator. Option two, execute dives whilst breathing backup regulator. The long hose primary regulator, disinfected properly, is clipped off ready to donate in case of an out of gas emergency. Option three, proceed with standard gear configuration and out of gas protocol only if all team members have agreed to the risk involved in sharing gas underwater with the use of a primary regulator prior to the dive. 
Paddy's recommendations go thusly, and I'll provide links to all of these in the description below uh, because I'm only selecting the kind of the sections on alternate air source use, and there's a lot of things that you need to think about, like even just spitting into your mask and communal wash tanks, even helping your buddy take their fins off. We've got to think about those again. But Paddy basically makes sure that you only use your seconds to donate to that and basically that person is the only person who's allowed to touch it and if anybody does touch it he has to dis disinfect it before continuing from what i could see ssi still recommends primary donate in real world emergencies uh, but it does allow for alternate donation in their training so they're kind of on the fence they'll teach you both but in all training procedures across all agencies from what i could see the ones that i looked at you won't actually put the second stage into your mouth during drills you just pretend with your primary as if you're breathing from that one for me, I think I've had two real world out of air situations where I've had to donate. Um, so it's still very much in the unlikely event, but it does need to be addressed. If I were out of air and the diver donating to me uh, sort of offered their primary, I don't think I'd reject it for fears of COVID. Now, don't get me wrong, I still wear my face mask in public. I wash my hands all the time time uh, I'm taking this virus very seriously more seriously than a lot of people out there I mean I haven't seen Sean since March which is the longest we've been apart in years but in an out of air situation without that second stage my chances of surviving are pretty slim will I be changing to a long hose secondary donate setup I don't know yet with that second stage clipped off to a d-ring it's not really quick release and I haven't drilled locating and unclipping to donate that second stage and to make it quick release i'm gonna to have to change my entire setup so what do you guys think i mean i don't feel like i even have the answer on this one yet i'd like to keep this primary donate setup because it's efficient and it's the safest that i can think of but if it puts other divers at risk of getting sick shouldn't we change it's an interesting thought and uh, i just kind of want to know your thoughts on it because divers are hitting the water again and it's very easy just to fall back into your normal routine and diving practices and we don't leave covid behind when you get on the boat and that's kind of it really if the poll feature does still work i'll uh, i'll put something up here uh, on whether we should change all of our procedures uh, to avoid infection or should we start to accept the risks and just move on with diving or is there something in the middle either way let me know in the comments below what you think may we may need to uh, sort of change and uh, we're going to need to disinfect our tank valves before and after every single air fill is that something we need to do will we have to self quarantine for 14 days after buddy breathing in an emergency or even sharing a second stage who knows let me know down in the comments below what you think and how this is going to change diving procedures in the future thank you for watching and safe diving